been written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found the cult just as Jesus had told them. As they were untying the cult, its owners came and said, why are you untying this cult? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus and they threw their cloaks upon the colt, and then Jesus sat upon it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their coats on the ground. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began praising God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen. They shouted, Blessed, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now some of the Pharisees in the crowd said, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. Jesus answered, I tell you, if they were silent, even the stones would shout, would shout out. As he came near and saw the city, he began to weep over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognised on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes, indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and they will surround you and they will hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, not just you, but you and your children's children within you. And they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognise the time of the visitation from God. Let's stand and worship together. Good morning, church. I was just trying to make sure that Matthew was definitely going to sit down then. Good morning, church. It's good to, to be with you this morning for Palm Sunday. I love reading that Palm Sunday account. But can I be honest with you? Can I be honest? I'm normally honest anyway, whether you like it or not. So there's a bit of pressure this morning because this is the third. I don't know if you, you've spotted it. But this is the third Palm Sunday in consecutive years that I've preached here at Cotton End. The previous two years have been on video. This year it's in person, but this is the third year. And as I was preparing my message for this morning, I was reminded of some words that Kate said, Kate, uh, last year. She rang me up after my Palm Sunday message last year and she said, that's the best message you've ever preached. And I didn't think I'd preach particularly well. So there's an element of trepidation this morning as you go, what can I pull out new for us as we think about Palm Sunday this year? So let's pray as we open God's word together. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts and lives be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. A question this morning. How good or bad are you at expressing your emotions? How good or how bad are you at expressing your emotions? I want to say that I get my emotions right in every situation. But I'm sure if you ask Becky, she'd tell you that wasn't true. Spring harvest. Here we come. Matthew said this morning that he liked my tie this morning because I've made a bit of an effort for church this morning. But I did wonder whether or not I should come 
in shorts and t-shirt to preach this morning? Would you have minded? Would you have minded? Because this week, we are off to spring harvest. And I certainly won't be dressed like this for spring harvest. Nine o'clock tomorrow morning, we're setting off to Skegness. And I'm looking forward to it. Jen, my sister-in-law said, because of Becky and her timings, tell her it's eight o'clock we're leaving for Skegness, not nine o'clock. But I can't wait. I can't wait to be back at Skegness. Skegness, a place having not been for two years. I'm looking forward to sitting with thousands of believers this week, sitting and thinking about what God would want to say to us as we gather, as we think about what it means to rebuild and to be restored, looking at uh, Nehemiah. I'm really, really excited. I said I was a little bit nervous about coming and preaching this morning because of what Kate said last year. But I'm also excited about the fact that we're here this morning opening God's word at the start of this most significant of weeks. Holy week. Holy week. It's a period of immense drama. That's what's going to unfold this week. And so if I say absolutely nothing this morning that makes any sense, allow your emotions to be at the heart of this week. This week, we will weep, we will stand, we will look in silence as our Lord stands hung to a cross. Please, please, and I did say this last year, please, 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 do not come to church today and hear the beginning of the story and come next week to hear the ending. Go through the bits of the, the book and the chapters that follow. Continue reading Luke's Gospel, which is the reading that we're thinking about this week. I don't know, Rob, what passage you're speaking on next week. John. But John, you're doing John. Well, in which case, read all of John as well as Luke. <laughs> but today is Palm Sunday, that first day of Holy Week. As we think each year on Palm Sunday, we think about the joyful, triumphant procession. The singing of Hosanna. Churches give these out. Indeed, I stole one from the back of church. Get one. We have our palm crosses. Today is a day of celebration. Characterised by triumphal entry, palm crosses and Hosannas. A friend of mine who is a teacher once said that teaching Palm Sunday to children is an absolute delight because it is just one big party. However, and there's a big however coming, as I've prayed about what I believe God wants us to hear this morning, I want to focus not on the joyful entry, the palm branches, the shouts of Hosanna, I want to think about Palm Sunday in a different place. And that's from those verses towards the end of the passage that we heard as we opened church this morning from Luke chapter 19, verses 41 and following. Because that speaks of a Palm Sunday that has tears and weeping. A friend of mine the other day said, as I pray, I believe that God is saying at the moment that there's a lot of turbulence. People are feeling in a challenging and difficult place. There's a lot of turbulence. And I wonder if that's how you feel this morning as we come into church. We can turn on Palm Sunday and we can sing, praise is rising. But actually, we don't feel like that. Matt, thank you for being honest about sharing about how you're feeling. 
Because I think for most of us, we need to be more honest. And that's why I think it's not by accident that we have these verses that follow Jesus' rebuke to the Pharisees when Jesus says, I tell you, if these people were to keep silent, the stones would cry out. But the verse that comes next, as he, Jesus, approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it. And as the Amplified Translation goes on to say, he wept over the city and the spiritual ignorance of the people. When I spoke last month, we looked at the Lord being our shepherd. And I wonder on this Palm Sunday whether that's something we need to, to think a little bit about again. If you're looking at a psalm to accompany the passage this morning from Luke and those verses from Luke 19, 41 to the end of the chapter, maybe they go well together. When you set out for church this morning, you're probably thinking this isn't the message that you were expecting to hear and yet it is the message I believe that God's given me to share this morning when I say to you tears and weeping when you look at the fact that Jesus wept over the city I wonder how you feel are you somebody who sits there and goes great if Jesus wept, so I can weep. I can be real. I can be authentic. As you look at Jesus weeping over the city, are you somebody that says, come on, Jesus, stiff up a lip, be a bit more British, hold back the emotion? Are you somebody who, when you see Jesus weeping over the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, are you somebody that says, I would cry, I would cry, but I've cried, and I've cried, and I've cried, and nothing comes out because I have weeped, and I have wept, and I have wept. Palm Sunday. If we look at Palm Sunday through the veil and through the eyes of weeping tears, it presents us with something that's altogether not easy or comfortable. But I would suggest is how Jesus might be feeling as he enters into this last week of his life. You may say, Adam, it would have been much simpler this morning if you'd have preached on the triumphal entry the palm branches, the hosannas. But I have to say, when I look at this passage, some of what we think is in the Palm Sunday account actually isn't there. What did Luke say, if you have your Bibles, what does Luke say about palm branches? He doesn't say anything. He says that the people following Jesus put their cloaks out. He didn't say they waved their palm branches. There's no mention of palms in Luke's account. What does Luke say about Hosanna's? Nothing. He says the people praise God in a loud voice. Luke is actually the only one of the Gospels that doesn't mention the Hosanna's. What does Luke say about weeping and tears? Well, nothing if you stop at verse 40, which is where many churches who are studying this passage this morning will stop. There's no mention of tears there. But it's interesting that we do need to go on because Jesus continues, as the scripture says, he continues on his journey towards Jerusalem. And at that point, as he sees the city, there he weeps. There he weeps. I read a commentary this week as I was pondering this and it said that actually Palm Sunday should be more accurately termed, not the joyful entry or the triumphal entry, but the tearful entry because Jesus weeps as he heads into his final week. I asked you a question a couple of weeks ago, how's Lent going for you? 
how's Lent going for you? Have you given that question a second thought since I posed it a couple of weeks ago? How's Lent going for you? Are you going to walk through this holy week in an authentic, meaningful, and faithful way? That means that we can come with vulnerability because that's at the heart of Holy Week. Jesus didn't not endure the cross because he was scared of his emotion. Jesus weeps and he cries as he sees the city Jerusalem. He knows what's going to happen. What do I believe that Jesus was crying for as he looked on this, looked on at the city of Jerusalem? I believe that Jesus wept tears that would form rivers of love and compassion. This place where Jesus was going to spend the last week of his life meant something. And so he cried. So, Jerusalem, what does it represent? It's, as, this, as Luke the Gospel writer says, it's more than just a city. It's about the ignorance of the things that make for peace and the blindness that many of us have to understanding the visitation of God. There is still, there is still a weeping that goes on for the Holy Land. This last week I had the privilege of speaking to a vicar in the Holy Land. Next week, if you listen to UCB1, and I'll only put this as a side plug, but on UCB1 this week, on the hour of prayer, there is going to be some prayers from the Holy Land, and I had the privilege of recording the prayers that you'll hear this week on UCB1. Father Faddy, who I spoke to, said that we still weep for the Holy Land, but we still also weep for the thousands of other places around our world where there is violence today, where there is prejudice for the promotion of ourselves. We weep for hate-based politics. We weep for the refusal for loving our enemies, even our neighbours that whole area about how we refuse to love our enemies and even our neighbours is something I've been thinking on an awful lot recently. How do we do community differently? Jesus, as he looks at Jerusalem, sees all this and weeps. So, friends, are we going to weep this holy week with the reality of what's going on in our lives and in our world it's okay to cry i believe that what god wants to say to us this week is yes this is a holy week about jesus but it's also a holy week where you can come and be real with me about the difficulties and the painful situations. Why? Because I know. What kind of tears will we weep this week if we will let ourselves? Will we weep wet tears that roll down our faces, that allow us to show that we are weeping? Will we weep tears that are dry because we don't know how? That thing I said a few moments ago about the fact that we have wept and we have wept and we have wept over situations that are difficult and now our eyes don't even get moist when we try to cry. The good news that whether we weep 
wet tears or dry tears this week. God sees them both as real and authentic because they express the same truth that in our hearts it is pierced because we've been real with God. Jesus' heart, Jesus' heart was pierced when he saw the city. If you continue to read through Luke's gospel, and we see more examples of tears and weeping and honesty and authenticity and vulnerability, Peter's heart is pierced when he hears the cock crow and he knows that he has let Jesus down. The women's hearts were pierced when they saw Jesus hanging on the cross and they knew the absolute reality of the situation. They knew that Jesus had died. A couple of weeks ago, I went to St Paul's for evening service. For me, it's important that as somebody who gives out in ministry that I also go and receive. And so a couple of weeks ago, I went to St. Paul's for their evening service. It was just four of us. It was a small service, but it was a hugely powerful and emotional service. Cliff, the reader at St. Paul's, was walking us through the journey to the cross. And for me, as I came to station 13 in the stations of the cross, it may be unfamiliar to some of you, to some of you it may well be familiar. I felt my heart pierced again when you get to station 13. Because in station 13, it's where Jesus is taken down from the cross and he's placed in the arms of Mary, his mother. It can do nothing but make you weep. As I think about that 13th station, I remember over many years how in ministry I've stood with people at their deathbed or at the graveside of a loved one. And I know that I've struggled to say the right words. All I've done is break down in tears. My heart breaks as I look at the news and see photographs, images of refugee children like Peter. I think about the times when I know that I should have done more for what's going on in the world and I've left those things undone. The thing is, this is what I feel like, but I know if we were to go around church this morning, you would say similar things you would share similar things because i am fundamentally no different to you i just have the opportunity to stand in front of a microphone and share we all at times can break down in tears we can all at times know that things are broken I ask you, friends, I ask you this holy week to allow God to speak to your heart. To speak into your heart and to not let emotion get in the way. If we don't allow God to speak, we will deny ourselves the opportunity to really celebrate the power of Holy Week. And we won't really get to a place where next Sunday when we come to church and we celebrate the resurrection, we'll have not gone the full journey. So please, this week, whether you're good or whether you're bad, at expressing your emotions. Please, this week, express your emotions to a God who loves you, who wants you to be real and authentic. Why? Because Luke 
1941 says that as Jesus came near and saw the city, he wept over it. May we have a tearful Holy Week. Let not our emotions prevent us, but rather bring them to God. Amen. We're going to have two songs.